we're here with Mickey Falp. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we couldn't uh, get together at the PDAC 2015. You got held up, Mickey, at the at the airport. Two days in a row, freezing rain in Dallas the first day, shut down the airport. Uh, a big snowstorm in Albuquerque that oh night my. shut down the airport for the next day, so I just bagged. Uh, but, uh, you know, thanks for joining us here uh, at the office here. Uh, again, Mickey Falp with Mercenary Geologist. And you've done some really uh, interesting papers of late. One was uh, really focusing on the real cost of mining gold. And uh, that really caught my attention, uh, given that the gold price right now, I mean, today it reached a 1200 But, right. uh, um, you know, let's lay the groundwork. Uh, first of all, you know, you work in conjunction with Cypher Research in That's Vancouver. Right. You've come up with some pretty interesting conclusions and, uh, and analyses. Uh, one of the things that they mentioned was since 2003, the gold price has gone from $344 to 1260 approximately. Um, and that's a 266% gain. Um, but most of the gold, you know, most of the major gold miners are, are still not profitable over this period. And, you know, in this quarter, last quarter, you've seen, again, even in the silver space, uh, additional write downs. So, yep. you know, what are the two non gap measures that you looked at? As so, from 1990 till 2013, mm -hmm. uh, the gold mining companies adopted this thing they called cash costs mm -hmm. that was supposedly going to allow you to compare contrast the, the uh, potential profitability of any mining company. Right. Well, those are basically operating costs and they don't account for the for the real cost of mining gold, not even beginning. So right. we would see companies five or six hundred dollars an ounce and gold prices thirteen or fourteen hundred dollars and they're still losing money. Well how right. do they do that? Mm -hmm. So so because that was not a good metric in 2013, the World Gold Council, which is composed of 21 large and mid-tier gold producers, mm -hmm. came up with a new thing called all-in sustaining costs. Right. But that doesn't tell us whole story either. Right. Uh, lots of stuff missing out of that. And so we went through that and showed that not only are these non-standard, non-gap measures, but you can't compare company to company, even in all-in sustaining costs. Some include some stuff and don't include others. And not only that, it's even confused the issue because companies from year to year don't report the same, same standards. There's byproduct, gold, co-product, co all this other mm -hmm. stuff. So it doesn't really work. So what, what were some of the things that you found from the producers, what are some of the conclusions then just in addition to your comments now uh, based on these non-gap measures? Okay. And what they do is they take operating expenses and a certain percentage of those or certain criteria they'll move into capital expenditures and depreciate right. that and so those costs don't show up in the all-in sustaining costs and they really don't show up on the balance sheet except as depreciation expense until the asset goes bad and they're written down. Interesting. So so essentially what they're doing is they're making themselves appear short term profitable but it comes back to bite them in the long term. And why and what are the conditions for a producer to be in a position of, of producing healthy cash flows? What are some of the... Well they basically I mean uh, the revenues which is operating cash flow, operating from selling selling gold, if mm -hmm. you will, uh, has to exceed the operating expenses, mm -hmm. what we call IMP, investment in mining property, that's the aforementioned capital right. expenditures, right. Yeah. plus debt repayment, plus dividends. So you mm -hmm. take revenues divided by those four things, it's essentially cash inflow versus cash outflow mm -hmm. and we call that the adequacy ratio or I should say cipher research yeah, yeah. calls that the adequacy ratio and if a company's adequacy ratio is greater than one it's healthy and if it's less than one it's unhealthy mm -hmm. and what we showed was over this 11 year period with seven major gold miners uh, none of the companies were profitable on the on the long haul mm -hmm. the industry as a whole was only profitable in one year and that was barely profitable uh, with a ad adequacy ratio of 1.01 wow in the 11 year period we studied and that one year was 2011 when the gold price is all time high and what is the real root of the problem and what are some potential you know are there some potential solutions out there 
we can do uh, Cy Cypher and I think the real root of the problem is is that companies have focused on growth. They want to grow their production levels. They want to grow their resources and reserves. Mm -hmm. uh, what I call a Wall Street style of capitalism, gross for gross sake. Mm -hmm. And so by doing that, then they are able to appease the shareholders and the analysts on a quarterly basis. But there's no, uh, there's no looking into the longer term. So, so like good scientists and engineers that we consider ourselves to be, we propose a solution. The solution's easy. They need to become value companies. Mining is not a growth industry. Historically, it's a value industry. Right. And it's all about margin. So you want to be in, in a low uh, quartile, lowest quartile of mm -hmm. producers. Uh, in other words, your all-in costs are, are protected against the rise and fall in prices. Mm -hmm. No matter what the gold price is, you will continue to be profitable. Mm -hmm. And you want to maintain that margin. So under that scenario, gold production would go up when gold price is high. It would automatically go down when gold price is lower mm -hmm. because you want that margin. Look at it as a ribbon, and that ribbon mm -hmm. is always constant no matter what the gold price is. You're still maintaining a high margin cost per ounce. Right. And if, if the mining companies choose to be value companies instead of growth companies, eventually the market's going to come around and say, this is a value company. Yeah. I mean, look at the Dow Jones Industrial. Mm -hmm. so there's 30 companies and a significant number of those companies are, are value companies, right. not growth companies. So, so I, we think that's the solution for the gold mining. So, you know, you mentioned, uh, you know, that's very interesting points there in, in regards to the, you know, uh, quality over what well, quantity over quality uh, how long has that been happening for for the last few years and where does that leave the remaining n a number of ounces to be produced at at a high gold price or is there enough ounces to be produced from well certainly discoveries. yeah uh, the problem with discoveries is the junior worlds in it yeah it, the juniors are in a world of hurt too mm -hmm. right now and that historically is where where the majors get their deposits. They're not very right. good at exploring the bureaucracy gets in the way. Mm -hmm. So you leave it to the venture capitals and entrepreneurs to make the discoveries. Uh, those are not going to happen for a while. So the idea that we're going to peak in gold production uh, or in 2014, we've seen this rise in gold production year after year after year. And, and 2014 was the highest ever. We would expect that's going to start to come down now in 2015 because the pipeline's been cut off. Mm -hmm. But what, what we found during, during the, quote, good days in yeah. the business is that the majors go out and they pay too much for their acquisitions. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous, right. some of their acquisitions, and then they write them off. Uh, probably what's most damning about it, it appears uh, that they uh, go into debt to pay dividends. Right. Okay, so, you, so I, you heard it from Mickey. So the, I guess you're you really want the sector to just come back to value. That's what matters the yeah, most. Absolutely. Quality well, ounces. Look for those discoveries, and let's get back to what the sector was: value-based investing. Yeah, in, in, in these projects. And I dare say that it's not restricted to the gold mining industry. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. Cy yeah. Cypher has yep. only done research on on the gold companies. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel certain it's rampant throughout the mining industry and probably the oil and gas business too. Yeah. Uh, and it really has to do with the fact that, that under a, a accounting rules, a lot of stuff that should be uh, classified as, as operating expenditures right. or the cost of producing a unit of metal, mm -hmm. a unit of metal per ton of, mm -hmm. uh, of, of rock is is a lot higher than they show on the books. So thanks, Mickey, for being on the being on the segment today. Uh, you know, um, a really important topic: uh, real cost of mining gold. If you want to check out the more uh, more of his papers on this topic and various other topics on the sector, visit Mickey Falp at mercenarygeologist.com and also get a chance to get in touch with his partners at Cipher Research in Vancouver. We'll provide their information as well. Mickey, thank you. All right, thanks a lot, Sonny. My pleasure. Cheers.